In the waning years of the 14th century, a pall of doom seemed to enshroud the once mighty Byzantine Empire. The empire that had stood astride the world for over a millennium was now a pale shadow, a ghost of its former glory. Its ancestral domains had withered away, leaving only a few scattered outposts clinging tenuously to the northern shores of the Bosphorus and the Sea of Marmara. At the heart of this forlorn realm lay Constantinople, the Queen of Cities, an ancient metropolis of almost mythical grandeur. To the east, a new and terrifying power was rising, the Ottoman Turks. What had begun as a minor Ghazi principality pushing against the Byzantine frontier had rapidly metastasized into a unified military juggernaut. The Ottomans had already conquered most of Anatolia from the Byzantines and shattered the last crusader strongholds in the Levant. Now, with the zeal of recent converts fired by dreams of imperial conquest, they turned their gaze towards the Byzantine capital itself. In 1394, the Ottoman Sultan Bayezid I, known as Bayezid Yildirim or the Thunderbolt, crossed the Dardanelles at the head of a vast host. It was an army spoken of in the same hushed tones as the Mongol hordes that had overrun Baghdad two centuries prior. Tens of thousands of mounted archers, elite Janissary infantry, and heavy siege artillery joined a multitude of auxiliaries and irregulars in a great tidal wave of conquest. As this fearsome force rolled inexorably towards the Queen of Cities, the Byzantines began frantic preparations. Constantinople's once mighty walls, breached and broken in past sieges, were hastily rebuilt and fortified under the watchful eye of the Emperor. Machinery and mangonels were mounted along the ramparts, great stockpiles of food were laid in, and every able-bodied man was pressed into service to man the defenses. Yet even as they toiled, a palpable sense of fatalism hung in the air like a thick fog. Constantinople's population had dwindled to around 50,000 souls. Entire districts inside the gargantuan, triple-walled fortress city lay abandoned and desolate. Could such a pale remnant hope to withstand the Ottoman deluge? Perhaps, some wondered, it would be wiser to abandon the city before it was too late. In late summer of 1394, the Ottomans began systemic operations to fully isolate Constantinople. An armada of ships sealed off the waters while siege lines were constructed on the European and Anatolian sides. Bayezid's men moved with relentless efficiency, gradually tightening the noose. As Christendom looked on with trepidation, the first assault waves crashed against the land walls of Theodosius II on the western side of the city. There the battle raged for weeks. Christendom's prowess in siege artillery allowed feeble probing attacks to be repelled, but the writing seemed to be on the wall. How long could a mere handful endure? Amidst the gloom and chaos of the early assaults, one figure provided an inspirational beacon of hope and determination, the versatile polymath Theodore Gavras. A formidable warrior scholar in the finest Byzantine tradition, Gavras refused to despair. Overseeing the repair of dilapidated fortifications and the positioning of artillery, this diminutive yet tireless man embodied the indomitable spirit that would define Constantinople's resistance. Against this backdrop of mayhem, Theodore Gavras anticipated that the walls would soon be breached. His contingency plan was brilliant and ingenious, he had a massive metal chain link strung across the entrance to the Golden Horn under cover of darkness. This would prevent the Ottomans from using their ships to reinforce a breach in the defenses from the sea. It was a typically resourceful Byzantine countermeasure. In the end, Bayezid's siege petered out into an unmartial sprawl. Having failed to breach or starve out the city, the Sultan lifted his leaguer in early 1395. Constantinople endured, battered and bruised, but defiant. As the last Ottoman soldiers slinked away from the city's walls, the Byzantines erupted into rapturous celebrations. Church bells pealed, while crowds sang and danced in the streets. It was to be their last great triumph. Yet even in that tumultuous hour, perspicacious minds recognized that the empire had been granted only a temporary reprieve, not a decisive victory. The events of 1394-95 exposed the terrible imbalance of power between Constantinople's decaying realm and the rising Ottoman juggernaut. Few were under any illusions about the outcome when the Turks inevitably renewed their assault.